Ever wonder why a toy car doesn't keep rolling forever once you give it a nudge? Or why your phone battery drains even when you're not using it? Well, it all comes down to energy conservation. Welcome to the intriguing world of energy, a realm we all inhabit but seldom fully understand. It's as ubiquitous as the air we breathe and as elusive as a shadow at high noon. In this realm, energy has a language all its own, and it speaks in many forms. Consider the light bulb, the radiant heart of our homes. It illuminates our lives quite literally. But did you know that the light is just one form of energy? In fact, the electricity that powers the bulb is transformed into light energy, and a bit of heat too. Ever noticed how a lit bulb gets warm? And then there's kinetic energy, the energy of motion. That's what propels your toy car across the room when you give it a push. Or think about potential energy, the energy an object possesses by virtue of its position or state. Picture a book perched on a high shelf. It might not be doing anything right now, but it has the potential to release energy if it falls. Now let's visit the heart of the matter, the law of conservation of energy. It's a fundamental principle that governs the universe. It tells us that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. That's why your phone battery drains. The stored electrical energy is being transformed into other forms like light, sound, and even heat. But here's the catch. In these transformations, some energy may escape into the environment. That's why your phone gets warm when you use it for a while. It's not just working hard on your behalf, it's also dissipating some of its energy. So why does the toy car stop? It's because energy doesn't disappear. It just changes forms. The kinetic energy of the rolling car is transformed into heat and sound as it rubs against the floor. The car slows down and eventually stops, but the energy, it's still around, just in a different form. Now, let's dive deeper into the law of conservation of energy, the rule that governs the energy transformations. Imagine you're at a grand masquerade ball. All the guests are dressed in elaborate costumes, but no matter how they change their outfits, they're still the same people underneath. This is a bit like how the law of conservation of energy works. Energy, like our masquerade guests, can change its form, but it can never be created or destroyed. It's like the ultimate shapeshifter, constantly transforming from one form to another. One moment, it's kinetic energy, the energy of motion, propelling a skateboarder down a hill. The next, it's potential energy, stored and ready for use, as the skateboarder climbs back up. This law, this fundamental principle of physics, tells us that the total energy in a closed system remains constant. It's like a cosmic bank account that always balances. You can make withdrawals and deposits, but the overall balance doesn't change. You can't create energy out of thin air, nor can you make it vanish into nothingness. Picture this. You're eating a slice of pizza. The chemical energy stored in the food is converted into mechanical energy as you chew and digest, and thermal energy as your body uses the food to maintain body heat. But the total energy, the sum of the chemical, mechanical, and thermal, remains the same before and after your meal. It's a fascinating concept, isn't it? The energy that powers your phone, that lights up your home, that propels the cars on the street, it's all just the same energy, dancing between different forms. When you flick on a light switch, you're not creating light energy. You're simply transforming electrical energy into light and heat. So whether it's the radiant energy of the sun, the kinetic energy of a rolling ball, or the chemical energy in your breakfast cereal, remember this. Energy is always conserved. It's the ultimate conservationist, always ensuring that no energy is lost or wasted. Remember, energy is not a magician. It doesn't perform disappearing acts, it merely changes costumes. Imagine you're a superhero perched high on a building ready to swoop down. That's potential energy in action. You see, potential energy is energy that's stored within a system or object ready and waiting to be unleashed. Think of it as the anticipation before the big drop on a roller coaster, or the tension in a stretched rubber band. It's the promise of energy that hasn't happened yet, but is poised to spring into action. Now let's bring it back to our superhero. Perched high on a building, our superhero possesses a lot of potential energy because of their height. The higher the superhero is, the more potential energy they have. This energy can then be transformed into kinetic energy as they swoop down to save the day. But potential energy isn't just for superheroes, it's present in our everyday lives. When you lift a book off a shelf, you're giving it potential energy. The moment you let go, that energy gets converted into kinetic energy as the book falls to the ground. And it's not just about height. 
Potential energy can also be stored in other ways. A compressed spring, a fully wound up toy, or even a drawn bow all contain potential energy that can be transformed into kinetic energy. But remember, this transformation isn't always perfect. Sometimes during the transformation, some energy may escape into the environment, often in the form of heat, light, or sound. That's why a falling book makes a sound when it hits the ground, or why a toy car might heat up as it zooms across the floor. That's the transformed energy making its presence known. So, potential energy is a bit like the calm before the storm. It's the anticipation of action, the promise of motion. It's a crucial part of how energy works. And it's all around us, every day, in countless ways. So next time you're on a swing or about to roll a ball down a slope, remember, you're witnessing potential energy at play. Ever noticed how a machine gets hot after use, or a bulb gives off light and heat? That's energy saying hello in a different form. Now let's dive into the heart of our dissipation dilemma. Imagine you're at a rock concert. The guitarist strums a chord and the sound waves travel through the air, reaching your ears and making you bob your head to the rhythm. But not all of that sound energy is used to make you dance. Some of it dissipates into the environment, becoming a part of the ambient noise. Same with a light bulb, it transforms electrical energy into light energy, illuminating your room. But along the way, it also produces heat. Ever touched a bulb that's been on for a while? It's hot, right? That's because some of the electrical energy has been transformed into heat energy. So, what's going on here? This is energy transformation in action, my friends. And it's not always a one-to-one -one exchange. When energy shifts from one form to another, some of it might slip away, or in scientific terms, dissipate, into the environment in the form of heat, light, or sound energy. Think about your laptop. When you're playing your favorite video game, the processor is working overtime, transforming electrical energy into kinetic energy to move the characters on the screen, but it also generates heat. That's why your laptop has a cooling fan, to help dissipate the heat and prevent the system from overheating. This process of energy transformation is happening all around us, all the time. It's a fundamental law of nature that energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. And in this transformation, some energy may sneak away, escaping into the environment in a different form. So the next time your phone gets warm after a long call or your car engine heats up after a drive, remember the dissipation dilemma. It's not a flaw or a defect. It's just energy doing its thing, changing from one form to another. So when you feel that heat from your laptop after a gaming session, it's just energy changing its form. If energy is like a superhero, then its sources are its origin story. And like any good story, there's always a twist. Picture this. We have two types of energy sources, renewable and non-renewable. Renewable sources like the sun or wind are like the superheroes that just keep on giving. They're incessant, inexhaustible, and they're always there for us, rain or shine. Quite literally, these sources regenerate naturally and rapidly, making them a sustainable choice for our energy needs. They're the superman of energy sources, if you will. On the other hand, we have non-renewable energy sources like coal, oil, and natural gas. These are the one-time use superheroes. They're strong and powerful, sure, but once they're gone, they're gone for good. They've taken millions of years to form, and we're using them up at a rate that far surpasses their ability to regenerate. It's like having a superhero that's fantastic at saving the day, but then needs a few million years to recharge. Not ideal, is it? Now you might be wondering why we still use non-renewable sources if they're so finite. Well, it's because they're currently more convenient and efficient. Imagine having a superhero that can fly you anywhere in the world in an instant. That's the appeal of non-renewable sources. But the catch is, they're causing harm to our planet by releasing greenhouse gases when we burn them for energy. So, what's the solution? Well, we need to balance our energy portfolio. We need to use our renewable sources more efficiently, and we need to find ways to make our non-renewable sources last longer. We're in a race against time, and it's time we put on our own superhero capes to save the day. In this tale of energy sources, remember that every good story needs a twist. And our twist is that we have the power to change the narrative. We have the power to make renewable energy our main source and ensure a sustainable future for our planet. So the sun or wind energy is like a superhero with an eternal life, while fossil fuels are like a hero with a limited lifespan. So, our superhero energy has a dark side when it's derived from fossil fuels. Just as every coin has two sides, the energy story isn't all roses and rainbows. When we extract energy from fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, 
we're playing a dangerous game with our planet's health. Think of it this way, burning fossil fuels is like throwing a massive global scale party. Sure, it's fun while it lasts. We get to power our cities, drive our cars, keep our homes cozy. But there's also a dark side, climate change. When we burn fossil fuels, we release carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas into the atmosphere. This acts like a blanket, trapping heat and warming the planet. It's like turning up the thermostat, but there's no off switch. And here's the kicker. This isn't just about warming temperatures. Climate change affects all aspects of life on Earth. It's messing with our weather patterns, causing more extreme storms, heat waves, and droughts. It's melting our polar ice caps and causing sea levels to rise, threatening coastal cities. And it's disrupting ecosystems, putting countless species at risk. But don't despair. Remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed, only transformed. And this gives us hope. We can transform the way we use and source our energy. We can turn away from the fossil fuel party and embrace cleaner, renewable sources of energy, like wind, solar, and hydroelectric power. So, let's not make fossil fuel use an unwanted sequel in the story of energy, a sequel that's worse than the original, with a plot that's heating up too fast and an ending that's, well, rather alarming. Instead, let's rewrite the script. Let's make our energy story one of innovation, sustainability, and respect for our planet. In the story of energy, using fossil fuels is like a plot twist that leads to a cliffhanger on climate change. But it's up to us to decide how this story ends. Now that we've taken this journey through the world of energy, let's revisit the highlights. So, what did we learn? First, we delved into the enigma of energy. We identified a variety of its forms, from kinetic to thermal, potential to chemical, and how each form is used in our daily lives. Remember how we compared kinetic energy to a sprinter at the start line and potential energy to a poised pendulum? Or how we likened chemical energy to a fully charged battery, ready to power our devices? Those were some electrifying examples, weren't they? Next, we tackled the law of conservation of energy. Just like a magician's hat that can't produce more rabbits than it started with, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Instead, it's a master of disguise constantly transforming from one form to another. Just think about it. Every time you pedal your bike, you're transforming your breakfast into kinetic energy. Talk about meal power. Then we explored the energy of possibilities and how energy is stored as potential energy and transformed in various devices or systems. We discovered that energy is like a well-behaved student, always ready to be transformed into something new, whether it's powering our homes, our cars, or even our bodies. And let's not forget our favorite roller coaster analogy, potential energy at the peak, kinetic energy at the bottom. A thrilling ride of energy transformations. Moving on, we faced the dissipation dilemma. When energy changes from one form to another, some of it might escape into the environment as heat, light, or sound. Like when our bike brakes heat up, or a light bulb glows, or when we clap our hands and hear a sound. So, energy transformations aren't always 100% efficient, but hey, who is? Next, we weighed the pros and cons of renewable and non-renewable energy sources. Remember our metaphor of fossil fuels being like the ultimate energy savings account, but one that's running dangerously low? And how renewable energy is like a never-ending buffet, constantly replenished by the sun, wind, and water? It's clear which one we need to invest in for our future, right? Finally, we discussed the unwanted sequel climate change. We learned how burning fossil fuels alters the atmosphere's composition and contributes to global warming. It's like throwing a massive, unwanted greenhouse effect party, and we're all uninvited guests. Remember, every time you switch on a light or ride a bike, you're part of an incredible energy transformation story. So let's make sure it's a story of wise energy use, sustainable choices, and a healthier planet. Because in the end, we're not just energy users, we're energy stewards, and the future of energy is in our hands.